So we've got the recall razor come. Good boy. We've got the down plots. We've got the sit seats. Good boy. We've got the brake, brake. We've got the heel entry, razor, foos. Chip. Wow. Okay. We've got the healing, foos. Good. Break. So we got all that. And now you're ready to go for a walk. Okay, we'll go. Okay, so this is gonna be a Razor's take home video. I just wanted to make a, a video specific to your dog, but hey, those of you that also have bought dogs from me in the past, this video will apply to you as well because um, you know these, these concepts are universal when it comes to the dogs that we've trained and sold. So the most important thing to understand is you're only as good as your word when it comes to dogs. And by that I mean, does sit really mean sit? Does come really mean come? When you say good boy, do you really mean good boy? And it might sound silly, but a lot of people regularly lie to their dog and then wonder why their dog treats them like a liar. So dogs are consequence-based learners and operators. They do what's good for them and they avoid what's bad for them. And that's probably universal with all living creatures. So when you're handling your dog, you have to understand, he might love you. He might be very affectionate with you, and it, actually he does love you, and, and, and he is very affectionate with you. I guarantee it, after a couple of weeks with your new dog, you're going to be his best friend. But still, there's other things that he would rather be doing on many occasions than, than walking nicely next to you. Other than holding it down, maybe he'd rather go visit that dog that's walking by. You know, instead of coming to you, maybe he'd rather go and, and smell the interesting smells in that bush that six other dogs peed on. So you have to understand this. Just because they know doesn't mean that they will do. Ah. So your word has to be good. And if your word isn't good and the dog finds out that your word isn't good and that you don't always mean what you say and there's wiggle room, then there will always be wiggle room in your obedience. And the dog won't always take you seriously. And you'll have a, a kind of maybe sort of dog versus a 100% all the time dog. Razor, come here. Good boy. Flats. All right. So I'm going to run you through the obedience with Razor. He's obviously going to be coming with an e-collar. You're going to be reinforcing all the commands in the beginning with an e-collar. He doesn't know you from Adam. So you're going to be using the e-collar on a more... At mediocre level you're not going to be using it uh, as, as a big big consequence more as a bit of a reminder and you're also going to be rewarding him quite frequently in the beginning to build that bond to build that trust all right so I'm going to go over the commands and I'm also going to talk about how to reward him and how to correct him properly so people ask me what's a low level what's a medium level what's a high level totally depends on the dog so some dogs super sensitive some dogs not sensitive at all so for some dogs a medium level could be 50, and for some dogs, a medium level could be 20. Completely depends on the dog. Completely depends on the fitment of your collar, right? So if you've watched, and you must watch my original uh, Take Home Protection Dog video, it has all the little nitty gritty, all the details in there, okay, where it talks about how to fit the collar properly and so on and so forth, right? But just understand that it's not what you see. It's not the numbers on the screen that dictate what a low, medium, or high level is. It's the dog's reaction, right? So a low level, you're gonna see a, a barely perceptible response from the dog. He might, a little twitch, something like that. You're not gonna see a big thing. For me, a medium level, I'm gonna see visible discomfort from the dog, all right? Like, oh, that was uncomfortable, okay. And then a high level is gonna be very visible discomfort, okay? And there's a time and a place for all these things. Now in the beginning, you're gonna be in the low, medium range with the dog. Just, you guys are getting to know each other, you're building a relationship, he's learning that you mean what you say, right? And you're gonna also be rewarding him frequently with food, with a ball, whatever, all right? Building up that bond. I mean what I say, but when you do what I say, good things happen. So it's not optional when I tell you something, 
But good things happen when you do what I say. I'm a, I'm a nice guy. And I'm a reliable, trustworthy. You know, people talk about building a bond, building trust. And for what most people mean when they say that, when they're working with their dogs, they just mean bribery. I'll just give him food and he'll love me. It's like, no, true trust, true respect comes from the dog understanding that there are consequences, that he must behave in certain ways. Yes, you're a fair individual, you're a consistent individual, you give him nice things, but there's also consequences. He must behave himself. Otherwise, why should he? He might come get, get affection from you, take your food, and then he's going to go off and do whatever it is that he wants to do. And you're going to have a kind of maybe sort of dog versus a 100% all the time, oh my God, look how obedient that dog is. So this is a fundamental concept that a lot of people struggle with because there's a lot of misinformation out there in our society today, Google, whatever. A lot of people don't know anything about dog training, haven't trained a dog to save their lives, posting videos or writing blogs and stuff. Listen. Results speak for themselves, okay? You got, you're gonna see what the dog can do. You've seen what the dogs can do. If you wanna maintain it, you do things this way. So, I have very rarely had, I actually usually do the protection work with him. So he hasn't worked with me that much. So I'm expecting him to kind of test me a little bit here and there. And if he does, I am gonna make consequences, okay? And uh, you're gonna see that. So I'm gonna turn my e-collar um, to probably about 30. I'm just gonna kind of guess, right? 30 is probably like a medium level for him. And uh, we're going to operate like that. So I'm going to run him through his obedience commands. Now, anytime you do anything with the dog, run the dog through his obedience in the beginning. That's what I always say. I call it the warm-up. If you've taken your dog out of the car in the parking lot and you're about to go into the park, warm him up. If you've taken the dog out of the house and you're about to go for a walk in the neighborhood, warm him up. Don't just go. Not until you guys are like this. When you guys are like this, when you're like one unit, then sure, yeah, you don't need to do any of that stuff. But in the beginning, warm the dog up. If I have a new dog I'm taking out, even though I know he knows everything, I still warm that dog up. I see where are the problems and, and I make sure that he's in a he's in a, a, a receptive mindset before we go out into the pub, into public and, and expose ourselves to distractions. So the first thing that I'm gonna do with him is I'm just gonna call him over. I'm gonna break him. Break! 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 Good boy. I'm gonna let him go off and do his own thing, okay? He's going to kind of wander around. You could do this on a leash in the beginning, too. And I'm going to call him. Razor, come. Good boy. And when he comes, I'm going to praise him. All right? Or I can give him a food reward. So if you remember, the mark for food is chip. All right? You're peeing, so I'll let him pee. Razor, come. Chip. Yes, good boy. All right, so I'm just gonna call him a few times and make sure he's receptive to that. Razor, come. Chup. Oh, good job, buddy. All right, so he's coming, he's listening. I haven't had to use the e-collar. If I had to use the e-collar to buzz him because he doesn't listen, then I'll repeat the command a few times and make him make sure like we've, we're doing it without the use of the e-collar before we progress to anything else. Razor, come. Good boy! Razor. Come here. Razor. So there was the e-collar. And I'll still reward him, but he didn't listen that time. I'm gonna call him again. Razor! Come! Good job! Good. So now I'm gonna run him through some other commands. Butts! Chip! Good. And you'll notice that when he does something I like, I chip the behavior. Just chip the behavior, right? It's like, ch -ch -ch, ah, I like that. Do that again. Break. Seats. Chip. All right? And you don't have to. Break. If you want to praise them, butts. Good job. Ah, ah, ah. Butts. Chip. Yes. Right? Good. And you don't have to, when you chip a behavior, you don't have to feed them in behavior. You can feed them out of behavior too. All right? Now, what? Good. And you'll notice I'm always very clear with him. I like this. Do it again. This is a good behavior. So we've got the sit. We've got the plots. Break. Break, 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 break. Come on. And if I say break and he doesn't break, I'll make it. He might just be not paying attention or maybe he, you say it a different way than he's used to. I'll just, hey, break. It's okay. All right. So. Let's talk now about the entry to the heel, because healing is divided into two pieces. 
we've got the entry, and we've got the actual movement. Razor, foos, left side, chup. Okay, I want him on the left side. Always, you see how he came in? Break. I'll have him do that again. Razor, foos. Good. And you see how he's sitting next to me? I don't want him over there. If I say foos and he didn't come in properly, I would step back and repeat. Razor, foos. Come on. A little bit too long. So there I gave him a little bump on the collar. Razor, foos. Good. Now, if I've got my entries to heal, the next piece that we're gonna work on is the motion, okay? The actual walking. So, before I actually just go for a walk, what I'm going to do with the dog is I'm gonna do um, a warm up in that, motion, in that motion exercise. So, I'm gonna start with some uh, walk stops, walk stops. So, Razor, who's? And I basically just wanna see that he's doing what he's doing here, right? Where he's walking and stopping. There we go. You can see there he made a mistake. Pop up, right? Boost. Good job, buddy. Good. So now I've got my walk stops. Ah, 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 ah. Right? Now I've got my my walk stops. He's kind of where I need him to be in terms of that. I see he's trying. That's the thing. If I see that the dog's trying and he's making an effort and he's paying attention and he's with me, now I can move on to the next thing. If he isn't working with me, then I'm gonna work him through that until I see from the dog the effort. And when he's making the effort, then we're ready to progress, all right? So, we've got the walk stops, what's next? Well, turns are next. So, I always emphasize the left turns. A lot of people end up with a dog over time, even a dog that maybe initially received good training, that leans on their leg a lot, pushes into them a lot, right? But instead of walking nicely next to them off the leg, or they end up with a dog that kind of is way out there instead of right next to them. Ideally, we want the dog right on our leg, okay? Not pushing on it, but right on it. So the solution, if you've got a dog who's pushing on your leg instead of properly paying attention and healing, because that's what they do, right? Is they learn, well, if I don't really want to pay attention, all I got to do is push on his leg and look straight ahead and I can still scan around instead of really pay attention. It's not that he has to stare at you. It's that he does have to think about you and take some of his focus off the environment if he's healing. So if he's choosing to do that, all I do is I turn left and I bump the dog with my leg and hit the electric at the same time. So a lot of people have dogs that get in front of them and push into them instead of actually properly holding the position. So I'm gonna assume, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna assume that he doesn't do that, of course, but I'm still gonna show you why I do these turns and how I do the turns. Razor, boost, good boy! So you're gonna watch a left turn here, pivot left. And you see how he gets out of the way, right? Right there, yeah, that wasn't enough, so I gave him a little buzz. When I turn into him, sit, when I turn into him, I expect them to get out of my way. And what a lot of people do is they try to run around the dog. So they do something like this, boost. And they do that, right? Instead of properly turning, just pivoting and turning left into the dog normally. So all I'm gonna do is I just turn left and I expect him to get off my leg. And if he doesn't yield to my leg, he gets the leg and the electric together. That's just a little fix if you ever have a dog that decides that he wants to push on you. Where he is now, is perfect. This is where I want him. So now I got my left turns, okay? I got my left turns. He's yielding. Now I'm gonna do my rights. So right turn, good boy. Good job. All right, sit, Chip. I'm gonna reward him here. Oh yeah. Butts. So, Every command that we give him, you'll notice that he's not allowed to stop doing the command until he hears the brake signal. Razor, boost, brake. And if I say brake, he can go off and do whatever it is that he wants to do, all right? Now, if I give him a command, he's back in command. Plots, good, brake. Good job, Razor, yes, all right? So, 
The brake signal makes it clear for the dog that he's on his own time, however brief or long that may be. Seats. Wait. Good job, Razor. Okay, so the commands, of course, we've been writing them on the screen as we say them, um, but we're gonna go, I'm gonna give you obviously a list of commands with the dog that is gonna be at the beginning of this video. So you're gonna see all of them. And uh, obviously you're seeing us put them into practice right now. So we've got the recall, Razor, come. Good boy. We've got the down, plots. We've got the sit, seats. Good boy. We've got the break, break. We've got the heel entry, Razor, foos. Wow. Okay. We've got the healing. Foos. Good. Break. So we've got all that. And now you're ready to go for a walk. I'm going to talk to you now about the place command. Now, of course, again, if you watch the original video, you've seen how we trained the place command. But the place command is not just for in your house, it's for out in public. So if you're out at the park and your kids are playing in the playground, usually there's a bunch of these flat rocks in most public parks. So I like to use them as places. If you're introducing your dog to a new place, somewhere he's never been, picnic table, um, you know, rock, whatever, in the beginning, what I do is I have the dog go on and off of it a few times. Razor, place, good, break, good, and again, place, good, break. And if he didn't want to go on it, let's say he was like, ah, it looks a little sketchy, I don't want to get on that, I would just grab him by the collar, right, and I would say place, and I'd push him up onto there, and then when he stayed there, I'd praise him or feed him some food, if you're still giving him food at this point, and break and have him come off. And I'll just do that a few times till he's comfortable. Place, razor, place, good. So now I've said place, A, place, all four paws. There we go. So now the rule is that he must stay on there until he's been given permission to not be on there anymore. Right? That's important. Break, razor, place. So I don't care what he does on it. He can sit on it, he can lie on it, he can stand on it, he can do whatever he wants. He just has to stay on it until he's been given permission to not be on it anymore. And that's obviously the brake signal, all right? So this is a great way to kind of situate the dog. It's easier than them holding it down generally because they can move around a little bit, especially if you're there for a couple hours, they can shift around, it's comfortable, all right? So it's not for just in your house, it's also, you can use it out and about as well. Break. So that brings me to the next thing. Let's talk about playing ball. Now, most of the dogs we sell have a lot of ball drive. They're working line dogs, so of course it's natural. It's genetic, it's a genetic trait that they love the ball. So I'm gonna talk a little bit oof, about how to play ball with these guys. So I throw the ball for him. Razor, come. Come on. Good boy. He brings the ball back. Plats. Steven, come around here so you can see. I told him to lie down. Out. Mouse. He doesn't let go, like you see here. I buzz him. Okay? When I pick it up, I don't try to steal it. I pick it up from the string. I hold it right to his face. If he bites it, it's a no and a stimulation on the collar. He needs to be respectful of the ball. Don't try to steal it away from the dog. It only makes him come after it harder. Chip. So there's the ball. Off he goes, Razor. He picks it up. Come here, buddy. Never let him go off with it. It's between you and him, the ball. Come here. We can do some tug. So you can grab the rope, play a little tug. This is all right. If you say out, out. <laughs> got to work on that a little bit before we send him but you can see here he understands the concept chip. if I say chip obviously he can bite it again okay that's the reward signal house off he goes to get his ball you can use it in obedience as well they love working for their balls 
even though he's not a sport dog, but house, even though he's not a sport dog, they love it. So if you do it, it, it makes things so much more fun for them and it helps build that relationship with the dog. Walking the dog, all right? A lot of the time when I walk the dog, if I'm somewhere where there isn't a lot of action, I just let him go and do whatever it is that he wants to do. If I need him to come, Razor, come. Good boy, right? And then he can go off and do whatever he wants to do or if I need him to do something, Razor, Ooh. good. Now I've called him to heel, he's in the heel. Right? And if you feel like he's getting in front of you, little trick, go back to what we did in the warm up. Good job. Good. Right? Just do that. So, like, let's say you're walking with him and you run into something that's a little bit distracting, maybe gets a little excited. Just do some, some fast slows a little bit. You'll see that he comes back under control. Boost. Good boy. On the left, we're walking and stopping. Good. We're connected, he likes me, I like him. Good boy. Text. Have a coffee. And this is what it should be like if you're walking your dog. Break. And he can go off and do whatever he needs to do. Let's see. You see something coming, it's a little bit, uh, you know, dicey. You don't necessarily need him to come back to you. Maybe he's over there or something. What? Just have him hold it down. Good. Break. Put the video on the dog. Oh, not yet. I'll come back towards you. Okay. So this is typically how I walk my dogs if it's not like a busy area. Dogs loose, I can still call him. Like if he's going into something that I don't want him to go into, I just say, Razor, come. If he doesn't listen to me, right away I tap him on the e-collar, okay? When I'm doing this, I'm at a medium level. There's distractions. There's the potential for a rabbit to kind of come out of the bushes or something, especially in the beginning before me and the dog have fully connected. I'm gonna use um, you know, on a medium level when I'm under higher distraction. I'm not going to waste time. And what a lot of people do is they keep it on a low level, they go under higher distractions, and they haven't turned it up, and all of a sudden the dog sees something that really excites him, and he chooses to leave the handler, and they're caught, oh, let's try 10, let's try 11, let's try 12. Just jack it up, ask the dog to do what he's supposed to do. If he ignores you, bump him high. Right? Because he knows what a come is at the end of the day. He might have chosen to leave you because the distraction was so exciting. But if you haven't made a big consequence on him for that and you're still playing incremental numbers, the dog will happily ignore you. Razor. Boost. Good. So, also, a lot of people have this habit. They see the dog at boost. They see the dog walking in front of them and they try to pick up their pace to keep up with the dog instead of making the dog slow down to keep up with them. When I say foos, I mean foos. Whatever pace I'm walking at, right? Whether I'm walking this fast, this slow, or this fast, I expect foos to mean foos, all right? For those of you that like to jog with your dog, there's nothing wrong with doing that, okay? Start at a slow pace, make sure the dog is in control, and then you can escalate to a jog, right? Good boy, Razor. Right? And there's nothing wrong with doing that too. But this is not forever. This is just for in the beginning. Or if you've experienced a little bit of a degrade in the obedience, go back and do this work. You'll find that it all comes back together. Sit, flats. Whenever I get back a dog that we've sold for some tune-up training, pet, the dog comes back to us for obedience, inevitably, the problem that they have is they just not held the dog accountable enough. Oh, he doesn't know how to plots anymore. He doesn't know how to, to heal anymore. Well, guess what? You just turn it up on him, and all of a sudden he magically remembers. Yes, sir, sit down, plots, foos. I know all of it, right? 
what what happens is if you don't create regular accountability you'll see the performance of the, do the dog degrade because like I told you before he might love you he might love your food your ball whatever but there are other things in this world that he loves too and he knows that you're always going to be there for him and that he's always going to have food in his bowl at night and so on and so forth so there are other things that he's going to work for so if you don't make consequences on the dog and those consequences don't have a natural escalation and they're not appropriate to the situation, then you're gonna see a degrade in the performance of the dog. Break. Now here's the thing, guys. And I see this as well. Break. Not as commonly as the other side, but I see a lot of people become overly militant. I shouldn't say a lot of people. I see some people become overly militant where they're on the dog for everything. The dog is never allowed to leave their side. The dog has to always walk next to them like a soldier. He always is, they're always barking commands at the dog. You'll notice I ask him to do things. I hold him accountable to those things. I don't let him do them wrong. But then I also give him free time. Go do you, buddy. I'm not gonna make you do things all the time. You're not a robot here for my amusement. I need to have this control over you for your safety and everybody else's safety. But there's also an element of fairness involved. This is what dogs like doing, right? They love this stuff. So give them the opportunity to do that kind of thing. So uh, I think the, the only thing we really haven't touched on with Ray is he's a very social dog. He gets along with other dogs. He gets along with people, right? Some of the dogs that we sell, not so much, right? And we're always upfront with the client about what the temperament of the dog is. Some people like him more social. Some people like him less social. That's fine, all right? Now, Razor does happen to be social. That being said, don't put them in bad situations. My advice, strangers on the street do not need to pet your protection dog. They can get their own dog. They don't need to pet yours, okay? Children, again, he likes kids, but still, no. No, they, the children, again, you're just asking for something. What if he, he gets excited and he jumps on the kid or something, right? They scratches the kid in the face or something. You're just asking for trouble. Nobody who's not you or your family touches the dog. Okay, in your home, if you got the maid coming over, you know, if, if your buddy's coming over and you're not there to keep him on place and make sure that, you know, uh, he's behaving himself at the door and so on and so forth, lock him up so that he doesn't give somebody an unpleasant surprise, all right? No dog parks whatsoever. Those are terrible places, right? Where even though he's friendly with dogs now, that's a great place to take him if you want him to become unfriendly with dogs. And no meeting random dogs. I don't want my dog interested, excited, worried, you know, uh, aggressive towards dogs. And the way that I achieve that is I just don't allow other dogs to mean anything to my dog. You have your own dog at home, I'm sure. And if you do, that's his friend. Okay? He doesn't need to make friends with the randoms on the street. Um, we're going to do protection now. And you're going to see a little bit on the protection, um, you know, how to control them and so on and so forth. And, and uh, we'll go from there. Okay, so it's time for some protection. Now, this is a level two dog. So the handler either will hold the leash or will hold the flat collar and keep the dog next to, to him or her, okay? So on command, the watch, watch, watch command, the dog is to light up and to show uh, active aggression towards the decoy. Watch, watch, watch. <laughs> engaged until given the OUT command and the dog is to recall to the handler on command handler holds the dog by the black collar and lights him up again and just because it's fun we'll send him again send him You come for him now. <laughs> oh, boy. oh, done. All right. All right. So, 
that's it in a nutshell, okay? If you're ever feeling like you're you're in a threat scenario with your dog and there's a potential there's a potential threat, bring your dog close to you. Just bring your dog close to you. Hold him tight and just start muttering. You can take him away so he doesn't get excited anymore. Just start muttering. Watch, 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 watch. You just say this, right? Just watch, 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 watch. You don't have to yell. A lot of people scare their own dog with their activation command. And they're like, why is, why does he look at me? Because you're being crazy. You're saying, watch. You're banging him on the car. Just grab him, hold him close. Watch, 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 watch. And if it's a sketchy situation, if he hasn't already lit up, he's going to light up. Believe you me. Now, if somebody surprises you and grabs you, that dog's going to come and smoke them. You've already seen scenarios on our um, channel, countless scenarios like that, and you see what the dog does. Um, in reality, my suggestion, if there's ever a situation where the dog has to engage somebody, you have to get away, okay, as far away as you can, yell out. You probably have to yell it a couple times because it's real life, adrenaline, so on and so forth. Get the dog to come back to you. He comes back to you. Praise him up and get the heck out of there, all right? Um, on a scenario where he won't come off, you're going to have to go make a hard out, actually choke him off. Um, again, it depends on the situation. It's much harder to get a dog off a guy that's actively still fighting the dog, right? But if the guy's still fighting the dog, you probably don't want to get him off the guy, right? But again, this is where we're, we're getting into hypotheticals here. Suffice to say that you see the basics of the control required to keep the dog in a, in a safe manner. Um, the most important thing at the end of the day is obedience. A lot of dogs, you know, people get focused on commands. Oh, if I don't say the Listen, if it's a real situation, adrenaline's up, you're emitting the, the fear pheromones, the fear smell, the dog will cue in on it and the dog will react. Um, so that's going to be uh, Razor's little video. Uh, I hope you uh, enjoy it and it helps you. Any questions, uh, if you have one of our dogs, whether it's Razor or anybody else, anybody else, any questions, call us immediately don't try to figure it out on your own we are here to provide ongoing support for you and your super awesome dog that you got from us here at shield canine thank you for watching <laughs>